Welcome back to The Hook on Woodward Sports Network. All right, guys, we've been talking this up the entire show, and we've got him, Lions All-Pro Center, Frank Ragnow, 2018 first-round pick. Frank, welcome to the show. Hey, Frank, you caught me right when I was about to start watching an episode of your Grizzly Man Outdoors, where you're about to fall through the ice. I was watching it during the break. Do you fall? Wait, I think the last thing she saw was you say, uh... You only live you only once, live once. <laughs> but you're living, yes, right? That one hangs over my head quite a bit. Yeah, I definitely fall through. I'll, I'll spoil that for you. Oh, man, well, I can't wait. That's one of my biggest fears. Everybody always tells me, so I moved out of here from Southern California. Everybody always tells me, you got to try ice, ice fishing. <laughs> Have you tried ice fishing? I was like, you guys are nuts. No. And now I'm watching this. The suspense is killing me. But now I know you're okay when you fall through the yeah. <laughs> I made it, but it is. You do have to try it. It is a great time, and I definitely recommend you trying it. And it's a good thing you probably shot that and did that before you signed your new extension, which I want to (laughs) say all of us say congratulations. And I want to start there because the most poignant moment, for me anyways, was when you're standing up there and how it genuinely hits you how much appreciation this organization and how they thought about you. Can you just elaborate on that because as a professional athlete former athlete that's all you care about guys like yourself and you be in the center so can you take us back to that moment and i and i know obviously um having lost your dad and and your family's really close so i think this that that moment spoke to me more about who frank ragnow is as the man than anything else but can you take us back to that point moment yeah it's just um it's just so like still right now thinking about um, I guess the numbers right and the size of the contract. I'm not trying to sound like I'm boasting, but just like that's like the goal, you know. That's like literally a dream come true, and for that all to come fruition, come to fruition from so many. I mean, I, I had a great childhood and a great upbringing, but I definitely had some obstacles, and then just for it all to kind of a dream literally come true. And I guess it, it, it didn't really hit me until like that moment. And it hit me pretty hard. But that's a great thing. And that's why be loved is part of this offensive line and this team that is pretty much building from scratch. And I know Pilar had a question for you on what it's like to be a part of a team building from scratch. So go ahead. Pilar. Yeah, you know, I mean, Frank, most people will say, oh, this year my team has got a new coordinator, a new, maybe a new head coach, maybe a new, um, a new quarterback, um, maybe a new GM. Very rarely does somebody say, hey, we've got a, a new owner. And very rarely have I ever heard anybody say, hey, we've got a new everything. What is that <laughs> like? You've got a new everything. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. A lot of new faces, a lot of um, exciting faces, though, to meet. Um, But the one thing that, like, uh, has stayed pretty stable is uh, Hank Fraley, our offensive line coach. uh, We retained him, and that was was very big for me personally because he was a center in this league, and I really enjoyed working with him last year. And then you you look at up front, there's a lot of the same guys and a lot of the same guys in our room. So that's one thing that's very nice to me to have that stability. But, yeah, definitely a lot of familiar – unfamiliar faces i should say and it's just crazy but it's exciting getting to meet him right now especially how about that new kid on the block Panay sewell he's going to be a, a nice addition to that offensive line which was already a terrific line now gonna get even better at least that's what they tell us right yeah no doubt we'll, we'll have to see but yeah he's uh he seems like a great kid so far head down working hard i mean he's only 20 which is just huh mind-blowing to me but yeah he's he's a he's an impressive kid and i'm excited to work with him for sure i think frank that the big thing coming out of uh, Allen park and what coach campbell is competition even at the even you know at, at training camp no matter at practice but when you're at the facility no matter what it is my question is what does the offensive line especially what is a frank ragnow does he bring like throwing axes or something competition or can you lead us in? Because I believe that great competition, whether teams have had ping pong tables or different things like that, leads to uh, on the field. But uh, are there some different changes inside the locker room as far as what we've heard, like Coach Campbell saying? I just would say that it's just been very heavily emphasized. And uh, 
you know, we're competing in everything we do. And uh, the one thing that's beautiful about this league is every year it's a new year. And uh, you have to keep competing. Competing. The second you stay complacent, you're lost in, those, in, in the dust. So we just can try to compete every single day, win the day, and see what happens, you know. Frank, I know you haven't had much time to actually work with your new quarterback. You know, the season is still so young and new. Um, but have you been able to – study much on him or really kind of tell if there's any big differences between him and Matthew Stafford that's going to change the way the offensive line is going to have to protect him? <clears throat> um, you know, all these – they're both incredible quarterbacks, and uh, I'm excited to get to work with them. Uh, we've been working this week. He's, he's smart. He's obviously talented. He's won a lot of ball, ball games. So there's obviously going to be differences because there's different people. But we'll, we'll just have to see what that is. But right now we're just trying to get familiar with each other and see what happens. Hey, Frank, how does a kid from uh, Minnesota, a hunter, a fisherman, go to Arkansas out of all the schools? I mean, you had to have had a lot of schools coming after you. What made you choose the Razorbacks? Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, Brett Bielema was at Wisconsin, so I was kind of familiar with him as a younger a at a younger age. And he kind of started recruiting me at Wisconsin, went to Arkansas, and then really started recruiting me. And I met that offensive line coach at the time was Coach Sam Pittman, who happens to be the head coach right now. One of the greatest human beings I've ever met. Um, just loyal, amazing, supportive, just a great coach, a great person to be around. And uh, I kind of he kind of convinced me to go uh, go visit down there. And I fell in love with the campus, fell in love with him, and the rest is history. Wow. Well, it looks like it obviously, uh, you know, the path or the choice. Um, how about, like, what are some of the things, I guess, that not only motivate you, but the people that you look up to? You mentioned Hank Fraley, and I think that the really cool thing about the Lions is all the different former players that are in the room and the respect, I guess, because they've been there, done that. Can you, you know, that's a little bit different than it was in the past for you. Can you talk about that a little bit, about coming to OTAs and, and just seeing some guys that have played in this league and now they're coaches on your staff? Yeah. I think at the end of the day, as long as, like, there, you can be a good coach if you're a player or not, but one thing that the advantage is, that the uh, former players have as an advantage is we know that they've been in our shoes. And I think that's just that's just a good feeling because they get it. They get the grind. They understand when we may not be feeling it or whatnot, and they understand how it all works. And I think that's one thing where, especially Hank, right, like he played center. So that, even, that benefits me even more where I'm able to relate to him and we're able to get on the same page and think very similar. And I, very, I, I appreciate that a lot. Frank Ragnow joins us, Lions All-Pro Center. We're uh, happy to have him from Allen Park. Just got out of meetings, so we're glad he got to sneak in here with us. What's uh, How do you wrap your head around being the highest-paid center in the NFL, the National Football League? Oh, man, I wish I could tell you. I'm still working on it. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, I'm just extremely grateful, and uh, it's I, I'm still digesting it. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to keep be the same dude and keep working hard and keep trying to improve, you know? I think we kind of see that, and yeah, we we know what kind of dude you are. But what kind of what what NFL team did you were you a Vikings guy? Who did you look up to? Like who was your offensive lineman guy? Like when I was a kid, it was Jim Otto, double zero from the Raiders. Who was who was your yeah. guy? I wouldn't say I ever looked up to an offensive lineman. I, I think I was more <laughs> one of those delusional fat kids who wanted to be a quarterback kind of deal. So I was looking up to. You know, like Dante Culpepper for the Vikings. I liked him a lot. I really like Randy Moss. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I still thought I had a spot, chance to be a skilled player, and that, that was uh, short left. Who were you rooting for as a kid? I was a Vikings fan growing up. Frank, I mean, you wind up in the NFC Central. It used to be the, N the NFC North now. I mean, yeah, here I are. how perfect is it, man? You're here in Detroit. We got all the lakes. You come from Minnesota, yeah. land of a thousand lakes. You could have had Green Bay or Chicago. You wound up in the perfect division. Perfect. Ideal. Ideal, <laughs> man. To go back and forth from Minnesota and Michigan, that's like a sportsman's dream. So I'm going back. I'm fishing here. I'm fishing there. It's, it's, it is, I couldn't have asked for a better landscape for sure. Frank, I just want to go back to something that you said. You know, nobody ever – um, says, like, I, I'm looking up to any offensive lineman. So I have a stepson. He's 15 and a half years old. And we were talking about him playing football. And he was like, 
no, I'm not good enough to be a quarterback. I'm not good enough to do this. I don't want to be chasing people around. And I was like, buddy, what if you tried being an offensive lineman? And he goes, why? They don't make any money. And I go, well, Frank Ragnall doesn't say that. <laughs> so I want you to know that people are now starting to look, look up to you, my friend. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, it's you don't get much glory, but there's some there's some money you can make for sure. <laughs> Hey, What's Frank. the toughest challenge, Frank? Um, uh, we had Lomas Brown uh, on the other day, and he was saying that for an offensive line, you got to operate like a glove, and it's got to be mm -hmm. in motion and stuff. What is, I guess, the easiest? Uh, and the simple answer is obviously game time and playing, but how much can you guys get on the same page or you learn about each other in the video room uh, getting on the same page as that is that is that a lot harder or is it easier when you have younger guys drafted in like a penace as opposed to you maybe veteran guys coming from different places it's uh you know the meeting room is crucial um not i mean you're obviously not doing the dialogue that you're doing on the field but you kind of are right like you can watch tape and you can talk through it and i can let them know like hey, this is what I'm thinking here, and this is what I will most likely call. And they can kind of understand how we're going to communicate. And that that's that helps things out in the long run, and it helps speed up the familiarity on the field. And, I mean, it just it, – at the end of the day, it comes down whether it's a rookie or veterans coming in. It comes down to just getting spending time with each other, whether that's in the weight room or in the film room, in the training room, and just getting to know each other and getting comfortable with each other because you do have to work with all five as one for sure. Hey, Frank, we got to take a quick 15-second break. When we come back, we're going to get into that show of yours. You're a big star on YouTube, Instagram, the works. I want to ask you about your brother, Jack, too. So keep it right Thank here on you. the hook. Frank Ragnow right after this on Woodward Sports Network. So what's up? My name is Sean Belegian. Glad to be a part of Belegian and Bell every day at 11. I'm the guy that gets pissed off at all the stupid sports fans out there. What up, though? I'm Drake Bell here on the Belegian and Bell show here at Woodward Sports Network. Tap into the energetic Sean and the calm, smooth Drake Bell. Wow. Welcome back to The Hook on Woodward <laughs> Sports Network. We're joined by Lions All-Pro Center Frank Ragnow, who... Look, we all know him as the Lions center, but really, guys, this is really the grizzly man outdoor, huh? That's it. I oh, mean, yeah. <laughs> this is this is great. If you get a chance, you've got to make the time to check out Frank Ragnow's um, YouTube channel, Instagram channel, Grizzly Man Outdoors. It is amazing. It's just it's fun. It's just basically you and your brother having a good time, doing what you do. No doubt. And, in one of them, what I find is, is we're just, um, you know, chasing your dreams and desires of becoming a TV host and, and a pro fisherman. Um, you, you're already living most children's um, dreams and desires of being a professional football player, but now you're living out all your dreams. This is absolutely amazing. How did this all come about? No doubt. Yeah, it's 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 awesome. I wouldn't say we're there yet for Grizzly Man Outdoors, but we're climbing. But, uh, you know, I just love the outdoors. Um, fortunately, as I was growing up, me and my brother had a wonderful father who was really, really kind of a huge outdoorsman and kind of made that as a staple of our lives. And I'm so thankful for that. We just have such a good time out there. Uh, we've got a cabin in Canada that you can only get to by boat or plane, which is just like this remote little log cabin no uh, electricity no running water but it is just like sportsman paradise it is it is heaven on earth up there and that kind of really got us hooked and now we just kind of like you know we've always had the dream uh, i guess me and my father definitely had the dream is where i'd make it to the nfl and whatnot and then after that we'd have our own uh, show and so we're just kind of trying to continue to carry that out and uh, me and my brother are trying to get grizzly man outdoors big so you know one day because I am living the dream right now. Don't get me wrong. I love playing, being an NFL player, but, you know, that will come to an end one day. And in the offseason, I got some free time, and I think it's better than a lot of other things that could be doing. So I just fish and hunt and have a good time, you know. No, I, absolutely, and that shows. Um, can you give us – we put up a couple pictures of the, the small – just the small ones you've caught. Can you <laughs> oh explain gosh. to us uh, what the, hell the is picture that? on the left and the picture <laughs> on the right, like what kind of – what is that a uh, beluga whale on the or left and, the yellow uh, submarine uh, it's the yellow yes. submarine where do you catch the where do these photos taken and you know i'm more interested like what was the fight like and how do you like how do you catch stuff like that 
So the the one on the uh, the Goliath group or the one the gold one that looks like it's bigger than me, that one we uh, was in Fort Myers, Florida, and uh, it was actually during my bachelor party, and we went over this uh, shipwreck in like 40 feet of water, and the, the the captain or whatever that took us out there, he's like super casual, like calm, just kind of slowly setting the equipment up, doesn't really tell us anything. All of a sudden he hands me this rod, and all of a sudden this thing is bent over, like. <laughs> I thought I was going to get pulled in, and I'm a pretty—I'm not trying to brag, but I'm a pretty strong guy. Oh, well, you're not—you're the Lions uh, All Pro Center. I mean, <laughs> listen, what do you bench for? I'm almost getting pulled in. I'm seriously, almost getting pulled in. That thing was dogging me, but it's like—it's 700 pound test, like just mono y mono. That's a 500 pound fish, but for some reason, those big fish—they're kind of like offensive linemen in a way that their their cardio isn't exactly there. So <laughs> You beat him it was down. like two minutes of fight, and then he was done. So it wasn't as hard as you think, but it was two minutes of hold on for dear life, for sure. Wow. What about the one on the right? Is that a swordfish or a? That's a that's a barracuda. Barracuda. Yeah, that one. That, one I, uh, that was I caught that while fishing for tarpon, and that is just those saltwater fish hit different. I'm a freshwater guy, always will be. I love fishing up here in the Midwest, but I that was the first time I kind of tangled in the saltwater. And they, they battle, that's for sure. Different different game, definitely. I grew up on Lake Erie and lived down in Clearwater for a while, so I know exactly. Uh, and that's why I'm not asking you where your spot is because I'm keeping that quiet. That's Canadian. No doubt. Yeah, you know. You know. Well, what about hunting? What is your uh, – what are some of the things, like, is it, is it deer or do you go after some of the bigger stuff too? Bears? You know, uh, growing up I was big time into deer, and uh, but that's kind of tough. I mean, hunting in general right now is tough with my uh, my uh, my job. Your so, real uh, job, your day yeah. Job. So, so the fall I'm a little busy, so the hunting's tough. But I like to hog hunt. I've done that a few times. Um, deer, pheasant, pheasant was big in my family. Uh, those three are kind of the staples for sure. But I'm, I'm down to hunt just about anything besides bears. Because grizzly man outdoors, I, so I've got like a partnership with bears i love it so you were hunting razorbacks that's 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 your that's your alma mater man yeah i know a little bit of cannibalism going on it right is there. hey i heard you uh made it up to the up what you think of the beautiful up in michigan oh have you guys been, it is epic yeah. i was only up there i mean i was up there and it was i was i didn't like go sightseeing i didn't go to anything crazy yeah. but holy cow just absolutely beautiful man yeah. Beautiful. I'm, I plan on going up there a lot more for sure. But you know there are it Packer is. fans up there. Yeah, there, there were quite a bit Packers fans. Yeah, which, that's, they love the Packers. They, they're call us, there. they call us the trolls. We're on the downside of Michigan. They call themselves, you know, yeah, they're, they're the, the cheeseheads. We're the no, trolls. I take, I, take, I take that all back then. Take that all back. There you go. I'm just, I'm just kidding. We'll just, have to, we'll just have to ignore that. We'll go in there, we'll catch their fish, we'll hunt their, their yep. food, we'll look at their pretty stuff, and then we'll leave. <laughs> and we'll get out. <laughs> I love it. What about your brother, Jack, who you co-host um, the Grizzly Man Outdoors with? Uh, it's uh, something you guys have always done together, and like you said, just you know, evolving the dream, I guess, that you, yeah. that you guys have had. What's, what makes, what's the dichotomy, like, like what Jack brings? Is he like, uh, like some things more than others? Jack's, Jack's the guy that uh, he's my best friend, man. And uh, you know he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't like to do much of the camera stuff, and he doesn't really like to be on the camera. But he's when he is on the camera, he's hilarious, and he's kind of the star of the show. So uh, it's a good little dynamic. I'm trying to I'm kind of almost forcing it on him, but I know secretly deep down he enjoys it. Ah, hey, awesome. look at us, man! The only one good, that's comfortable on camera. The only one comfortable on camera here is Pilar, I and mean, you know she's got the looks. Look at us! I mean, well, D Mac, he's a ham. Listen, me, I don't want. I don't even look in a mirror. I, I don't want to be anywhere near a camera. Oh, I'm look at me right now. I'm looking rough right nah, now. But you're the Detroit you out. Lions All Pro Center. You're supposed <laughs> to look like that. Yeah, I guess. Hey, Frankie, before we let you go, take us back to that day uh, when you were drafted by the Lions. How many other teams were hitting you up on the phone, or did you know you were coming here? Uh, you know, there was, it was kind of a pretty hectic day. Um, my, uh, I mean, they weren't hitting me up specifically, but my agent, uh, you know, a lot of people were thinking that I was going to go 21, uh, to the Bengals. And then that day, uh, there are teams like, uh, I think it was like New England, Atlanta, Minnesota, that all kind of reached out to my agent about potentially, uh, moving up. And then I, to be honest, I was not expecting, uh, 20 to Detroit. Uh, we had 
I had a brief, brief meeting with them at the combine, and that was kind of it. That was really it. So that it caught me off guard. I got that call in the, the Dearborn area code, and I was like, holy cow, here we go, baby. <laughs> Frank, I got one more question for you before we let you go. So back to this um, ice fishing thing, because I am going to really try it. Um, and I've got, a, I've got a few months, thankfully, to just wrap my head around it. Mm -hmm. But um, what is the key to stay out of breaking through the ice? I don't want to <laughs> fall, Frank. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't be a jack wagon like me, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> what is the secret? How can I guarantee, that's... aside from not getting on the ice, that I will not fall through the ice? Yeah, I'd say definitely wait till you know it's cold, cold, and it's been cold, cold for a while. And then the first time you go out there, you got to have these spikes, or they like go over your neck. They can help you if you do fall in. And then you kind of go out there every once in a while with the spud bar and you check. But yeah, don't be like me. <laughs> Pilar, just go up to the UP. You'll be fine. It's yeah, yeah, that'll frozen be frozen there. That'll be frozen early for hey, sure. Yeah, I swam at Lake Superior in August, no, and I buddy. froze my ass off. It's because that's because yeah. you got pushed in for mouth. No, I didn't. My <laughs> wife went to school in Northern Michigan, so I know the UP pretty well. Hey, Frank, thanks so much, man. We wish you nothing but the best, and you know, have a great time with Dan Campbell and the gang, and uh, bring us home a winner. And you know what? I want my center to be a jack wagon. So thanks <laughs> a lot, Frank. Okay. Good yeah. luck. I thanks, appreciate Frank. you guys. Thank you very much for having me. Hey, All man, right, God thanks. bless. Have a great season. <laughs> Frank Ragnow, man. Oh, Love that awesome. guy. Yeah, make sure you're checking out his show, Grizzly Man Outdoors. It's great. I'm telling you, check it out. Good stuff.